It is a snowy May day here in northern Maine, and I decided it would be a great day to do an oil change on this 2009 Volkswagen Rutan. The Volkswagen Rutan is not really a true Volkswagen, in my opinion. It's a partnership they had with Chrysler for uh, several years where this thing is almost exactly the same as a Chrysler Town & Country. The engine inside is the 3.8 V6 Chrysler engine, has the Chrysler transmission. Volkswagen did do some tuning to the suspension and a few other changes, but more or less it is a Dodge Grand Caravan or a Chrysler Town & Country with a few improvements. With that being said, let's get started on this oil change. First thing I'm going to do with this oil change is I'm just going to take the oil dipstick here and I'm just going to pull it up a little bit so air can escape as the, uh, the oil drains out the bottom. I'm also going to crack the filler cap which is located right here and while I'm doing this oil change I'm just going to look around a little bit in the engine compartment look for any obvious leaks or things that might be worn out take a look at the serpentine belt over here and just give it a quick visual. This one looks good it's a little bit dusty but other than that I think it's ready to go so I'm going to lift this up and we're going to start draining the oil. All right, I'm now underneath the vehicle. It is, the camera is facing towards the front of the car and the oil pan drain plug is right here, located on the passenger side. I'm using a 13 millimeter socket and a breaker bar to loosen that. And I will say that uh, I prefer to change the oil after, the, after driving the vehicle, ensuring that the oil's hot. That's a preference of mine and I would recommend that you do the same thing. So I'm gonna use the breaker bar with a 13 millimeter socket to Loosen the drain plug and it shouldn't be on there super tight, but sometimes people over tighten them. And it was pretty tight, but it is coming off. You want to have your drain pan ready to make sure that the oil doesn't go everywhere all over your floor of your garage or outside. I'm actually going to move this one up closer. Now that you don't need to see where the drain plug was. And the oil is draining. I like to set the drain plug aside so that I don't lose it. I like to let the oil drain for quite some time just to make sure that I'm getting all of the old oil out of the engine. One thing you can do while you're waiting for the oil to drain is you can look where the oil pan gasket is and above that there's another gasket and just check for any obvious leaks. This does have some seepage going on here of oil. Sometimes I'll take a uh, wrench and just come up and just snug these a little bit just to make sure that they're all tight. Do not over tighten them. Another thing you can look for is on the lower radiator hose connects to this metal pipe here and this is on the passenger side of the engine. Make sure that's not rusted out in northern climates especially. Those can get pretty rusty and I've seen them develop pinholes. I like to give it a little bit of a wipe with a shop rag make sure everything's clean there and then I put the drain plug back in get my 13 millimeter socket and breaker bar again and I snug this up you do not have to go too tight you can look it up in the book and find the torque value if you want I bring it and just kind of snug it up a little bit and that's all you really need don't break it off and then while I'm here I just take the shop rag or some paper towels and I just wipe everything kind of clean it up and that way once you've changed your oil and you look underneath the car you can see if there's any obvious new leaks all right the other thing you need to remember when you're changing your oil is to change the filter the filter is to the front of the car from the oil pan here's the pan and the drain plug is on the opposite side of the oil pan so these should not, likewise, should not be over tightened. A lot of people crank them down. I do not even use any kind of oil filter wrench. I just use my hand strength. And so this is on here. It's probably pretty tight, but I'm sure I can break it loose. And here it goes. Before it starts leaking the oil out, I'm gonna raise up my drain pan, get it right up into place. So I can take the filter and spin it off quickly 
and drop it right into the pan. Now I'm going to wait for that to drain like we did the drain plug. And if you want, you can do both of these at the same time in order to save you some time. But I wanted to show them separately on the video. And again, while we're under here, we're going to just be checking for any obvious leaks from other engine systems. We got the lower radiator hose here. That looks nice and dry. We've got the AC compressor up here. Just looking for different things. Doesn't look like anything's out of order. You could look for hoses that are cracked. You could look for obvious leaks. You could look for frayed wires, anything. The starter. is right up in here. You see that? There's the starter solenoid up there where my light is. You can just look if there's any corrosion on the terminals. All good things to check while the oil is draining. Okay, we're down to the last of the oil here. What I like to do is take a rag, clean rag, clean the mating surface where the seal on the oil filter sets. You don't want any grit or dirt or particles in there. Use a clean rag to do this. And then I've added a little bit of oil on the top of the filter where the rubber seal is. That helps it to seal up there. I'm going to install the oil filter. And once I get it up there kind of snug, Fram recommends that you go three quarters of a turn to a full turn to just keep that thing tight. I can do that with just my hands. Probably you can too if you try. If you can't, then you might have to use an oil filter wrench. And that's good enough for me with the tightness. After I and tighten the filter down, I'm just going to take here, take my little rag, just really wipe around here, clean everything up real nice. Again, so then when we start the vehicle and we look underneath, we can see if there's any new leaks. And I've lowered the Ruton down and I'm ready to add the engine oil. It's going to be 5W20, says so right on the filler cap. And I have a funnel here. Now here's a pro tip you might want to remember. When I pick up a funnel to add my engine oil, I don't, I don't just grab the funnel. I take a little bit of solvent or WD-40 on a clean rag and I wipe the inside of the funnel out completely and I pull it down through because I want to have a clean funnel. I don't want any dust or dirt in there going into my engine oil. So make sure you keep everything really clean when you do maintenance on your vehicle. I'm going to remove the engine oil filler cap completely and set it aside. Then I take a clean piece of paper towel and I just like to wipe around the lip any dust that came from the road to keep that away from falling down into the engine. I have my clean funnel in place, I've got the oil, and I'm going to add all five quarts to this Ruton. Keep a little balanced flow going on so that you don't end up spilling the engine oil. Your exhaust manifold is right below this point, and if you end up spilling oil on it, you're going to smell it in the vehicle for quite a while. And the very last of the oil is being put in the engine now. Okay, we're ready to put the filler cap back on, and I did take the time to clean the underside of it before installing. I let the oil drain down into the drain pan for a few minutes, and now I'm going to check the level on the stick, and it looks perfect and ready to go. We are now going to start the engine and look for any leaks underneath. So we're looking for any leaks down around the oil filter housing here. You can see some of that housing from above. We'll also look underneath the vehicle. Okay, I don't see any leaks around the filter. I don't see any leaks from the drain plug. So we are good to go. So for this year's model of the Ruton, to get the oil change indicator light to disappear up by the instrument panel, we put the key to the on switch, and then we push the gas pedal down and release it three times, and then turn the switch back to the off position, and that will clear the message. Okay, as always, I hope you found this video helpful in changing the oil on a Volkswagen Ruton with the 3.8 liter Chrysler V6. 
Have a great day. Hope you subscribe and share with your friends.